Is it investigator or detective, Marcy? Investigator. Investigator. Either Marcy. way works. <clears throat> now we have only met just for about five minutes earlier today for the yes. first time, right? Yes, sir. Uh, let me introduce you to my wife and co-counsel, Laura Ho. Yeah. She and I represent Greg McMichael, okay? Yes, sir. All right, I want to talk to you about three topics that you've covered today with the jury. Uh, and let's start with the suspicions that you and Greg McMichael talked about that he had regarding uh, Ahmaud Arbery, okay? Ms. Donikoski asked you on direct during your interview if he used the words burglary in connection with his suspicions about Mr. Arbery. You remember that? Yes, sir. And she talked about, did he say he saw a burglary? And you said no, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, there's been a lot of questions. I'll take sure. over for it. Well, the gist of it was the, to suggest that in your interview with Mr. McMichael, he's saying he's not using the word burglary or theft in connection with what he saw with his own eyes, right? Correct. All right. Uh, now, you knew when you interviewed Mr. McMichael that he had been a law enforcement officer like you. Right? I knew he was an investigator with the district attorney's office. And that meant that you knew that he knew something about probable cause and suspicions and you were talking to him. Cause for speculation on this officer's part as to what Mr. McMichael knew or didn't know. Well, they talked about that in their interview. It's, it's gotcha. Those right. terms as opposed to what he may think Mr. McMichael may have known. All right, we'll, we'll get to what you two talked about then. So let's talk about those b beliefs. And I want to, what I want to do, you got your transcript right there? Yes, sir. What I want to do is use that with you to provide some further context for the jury regarding the comments Greg McMichael made to you during that interview, okay? Okay. So let's start at page eight. And I want to start with you at line 13. I'll do the reading, and what you can do is just affirm for the jury that these words I'm reading to you are, in fact, the words on the transcript, okay? Yes, sir. So you are interviewing Greg McMichael, and there at line 13, <coughs> he's saying to you, anyway, back, getting kind of ahead of myself, we were aware that there had been numerous entering autos and break-ins and such in the neighborhood going on for quite some time. That's what he said to you? Yes, sir. Continuing. And, of course, this guy was, what was on video was, I mean, logic tells you this guy may be the one that's doing it, right? Yes, sir. Now, that would be a suspicion that he had, that this guy is the one doing it, referring to burglaries, break-ins, auto thefts, and that sort of thing, right? That's what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Now go to page 11. And this is a bit longer part of the conversation. I'm going to read it with you. Um, again, there at the top of page 11, line 1, Greg McMichael is talking. It's just the two of you in the room at this point, right? Yes, sir. And he says to you, and you know, the first thing that comes to mind is this guy that's been breaking into this house down there that they got video, you know, may have been roaming the neighborhood and saw the thing. And he's talking, when he says the house, this house down there that they got video, uh, was it at that point you understood he was referring to the English house, the one at 220 Satilla Drive that was under construction? Yes, sir. Okay. And he's referring to video from that house, some of which we've seen here today during your testimony, right? That was my understanding, yes, sir. Okay. 
continuing on, you ask him, so this is not just this month that's been going on, right? Yes, sir. And he says to you, oh, this has been going on, and the two dashes would suggest that, that sometimes you two interrupt each other. That's what a transcript says, right? Yes, sir. And so he says, oh, this has been going on, interruption, and you say, last month, this has been going on for months? So far, so good? Yes, sir. And he says to you, four months, yes, right? Yes, sir. And you say, going back into 2019? Right? Yes, sir. And he says, oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. And you say, by a good bit? And I guess what you mean by a good bit, going back a good bit? Yes, sir. From February 23, 2020, when this interview's happening. That's what that meant, right? Yes, sir. And he answers, yeah, yeah, so, so anyway, so now we've got a missing weapon and the possibility in my mind that the guy that's been breaking in down the road there may have, may have that weapon. That's what he's telling you he's thinking, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And you say to him, possibility, and that's, that's your subjective opinion? And that's right, that's what you asked him. Right? Yes, sir. And he says, that's my, just a, just a hunch, I was a cop for 30 years, you know, and you say, right. Yes, sir. And then he says, and, and then you say, interrupt and say, was a hunch but a lead, right? Yes, sir. And he says, right, exactly. Yes, sir. And continuing on, page 12. And you said, we've got that intuition. Now, by we, you're talking to him saying we police officer, just not you and me personally, perhaps. But correct, we, just law enforcement we law and enforcement. in general. Now, yes, sir. We've got that intuition. And he says to you, exactly. Correct? Yes, sir. And you say, I'm on the same page as you. Right? Yes, sir. And then he says, all right, so I'm out there minding my own business, doing my upholstery job, and I look up, I hear it, I guess I hear it, I don't know. Anyway, I look up, here comes this guy hauling ass, and he's told you the story now, he's, this is the first time through, but he goes through it a few times with you, right? Yes, sir. And I mean, he's, he ain't out for no pleasant Sunday jog. He's, he's got it hooked up. That's what he said to you? Yes, sir. Like something's on his ass. I don't see anybody chasing him or anything, but I mean, he came out and I watched him. And of course, when he, when he came by, I got a good, really good look at him. Right? Yep. Yes, sir. And then he describes short pants, Every time we see him on the video, has short pants on, has black t-shirt on, but white t-shirt, he says. Yes, sir. Apparently correcting himself. And he's got short dreads, okay? So, I mean, it's the same guy. That's what he said to you? Yes, sir. All right, continuing on with the same topic of suspicions, go to page 24. And we'll start at line 15. <clears throat> Are you with me? I'm there. Okay, but 14, just to get the context, he says, but he, referring to this person he suspects, who turns out to be Mr. Arbery, he keeps going back over and over and over again to this damn house. And he's talking, that is Greg McMichael's talking to you. This is still in the interview, correct? Yes, sir. Plus, we've had numerous entering autos and other burglaries and thefts out of yards and that sort of thing throughout the neighborhood, right? Yes, sir. So you know he'd be a prime suspect. He's saying a suspect in his mind. He's telling you that that's what he's thinking. Yes, sir. Okay. And then he goes on to tell you, but anyway, Diego... The next section does not fall into the rule of 
completeness as it relates to the upper portion of this section, Judge, the statement of Jack? It does complete the context. I can show it to the court if you'd like. Starting at but anyway, right? Pardon? Starting at but anyway. Um, line 19. Yeah, okay. Yes, to so 25, the end of the page. I'm going to sustain it. I, it looks like it just transitions into the, uh, the topic, the, the <coughs> necessary for completeness on the statement above. So it's sustained. That last paragraph from 18 or 19 down, that just goes into a different area. Different from Mr. McMichael's suspicions of who the person is that he's just seen run past? Yeah, that, yeah that's what I just ruled on. There appears to be a transition there into a different thought, so I'm sustaining it based on what I'm reading from that portion of the transcript that I can see. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to defend my argument that this is in context of his identification of the person he suspects. And I, without reading any of it, it simply goes into his description of the person he saw as matching the videos that he'd seen. I understand. I've read it. I've taken it. I've looked at it and I've ruled on it. Okay. All right, let's go to page 43. And we're going to start at line 23. And it's still you, uh, Investigator Marcy, talking with uh, Mr. Greg McMichael, still in the interview room. And at line 23, he's telling you, but we got a missing weapon. We got a guy who breaks in, you know, this house down here. You with me? Yes, sir. And that's what he was telling you, right? Yes, sir. And it's probably, I think, if you'll check with them, I think there's other houses that they're pretty certain this guy's broken into as well, and entering autos. There's been all kinds of damn shit stolen. That's what he says to you? Yes, sir. And then you say to him, uh, we're about to dump everything that's ever happened in that neighborhood, right? Yes, sir. And dump mean investigate. Uh, go through our records system, yes, sir. Uh, and you say, and he says, yeah, and you say, and see if we, and then he interrupts you, and then he says, but anyway, in my mind, there's a good possibility this guy's armed. That was my thought process and my intention, and I know it was my son's as well, was to stop this guy so that, that he could be arrested or be identified at the very least. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the state also asked you on this section right here if they ever stopped chasing and just went home when they read for you on, or you read, on page 45, line 6, where Mr. McMichael's telling you they are yelling at him to stop, 
And, and Greg McMichael says to you, he wasn't having none of that. In other words, it didn't look like he was going to comply and stop at all, right? Yes, sir. All right. So let's go back to the previous page at line 14. That's page 44, line 14. And this is in the same context. And Mr. McMichael says to you, you know, if he had turned around and said, hey man, I'm, you know, Joe, I live around the corner and you know, I'm just out running, you know, it would have been a whole different ball game. He's telling you that? Yes, sir. But there, 44 line 14. It would have been a whole different ball game, and there was no doubt, especially especially his actions. When we would get up next to him, I mean, you know, I was as close from here to the wall from him. Now the wall, you're in a small interview room, and the wall is just a few feet from you, right? Close. Yeah, you could it, you could just touch it. It's is that close. Yes, sir. I'm in the back of the pickup truck, and you know, he's he ain't. He has no intention of stopping. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then let's flip over on the same topic to page 65. Now, this is when Investigator No Healy has come into the room, and the two of you are now talking briefly with Mr. McMichael. You remember that part when he showed up? Let me get there with you. Page 65, and I'll start at line 7. I'm going to check. Um, I'm objecting based on the fact that this is a suggestion by Officer Noah Hilly, and it has nothing to do with the sections around it. And it's not the words of Greg McMichael. It's Greg McMichael agreeing with something investigating Hill is putting out there on page 65. Well, that's not exactly accurate. You would like to see it. No, no, I, no, it sounds like it goes to wait anyway. I mean, you can go ahead and redirect okay. it and clarify. Okay, so Investigator Marcy, we're at page 65, line 7. And no Hillies come into the room uh, with you and Mr. McMichael. You remember that? Yes, sir. I don't believe this is me. I believe this is a typo on who was speaking. The oh, words the are correct, but the typo saying Investigator Marcy versus Investigator Nohilly, I believe this is a typo on the investigator. What line are you talking about? Um, 10. Where it says Investigator Marcy? Yes, sir. Okay. You're saying that's a typo, it should be Investigator Nohilly? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you were there? Uh, this time I was downloading the uh, the phones. All right. So you're saying that the transcript is inaccurate here, um, and that it should have said investigator no Hilly. Yes, sir. All right. Now the state asked you early on if you had reviewed the transcript. Yes, sir. And asked you if it was an accurate account of Mr. McMichael's words while he was in that interview room? The, the words are correct. The spoken words are correct, okay. but the investigator identity is right. typo, is mistaken there. All right, and this is your interview with Mr. McMichael, so we'll continue. And we'll just do the part where Mr. McMichael is talking, and the, for context, we're talk, the subject we're talking about is... Objection. Well, first off, I believe the page we're on Detective Marcy is not even in the room. So going into this right now, when no Hilly's in the room, talking to Greg Michael would be inappropriate. Yeah, all right. if, if I can defend, um, the, in, the transcript says Investigator Marcy. And we received this in discovery from the state. And as you know, Your Honor, we've talked about with the state what parts can be read. And I'm looking at an agreement and yellow highlighted that this is a part that can be read. And I can show it to the court. No, I, I don't doubt it, but the investigator has indicated that he wasn't present for it. So 
off. I'm not sure. Well, Even with the mistake in the train, uh, there's a way to work around that. But if he wasn't present for it, uh, well, I, I didn't know. I just saw his name, and I just found out right now that he's saying that's not him. So I'm learning that right now. So if there's a way around it, um, other than me just asking him, are these the words in the transcript Mr. McMichael said on a videotaped interview that he's reviewed? That would be the way to work around it, in my view. Okay. State's made an objection, so. Yes. This transcript was created by the state and approved and proofread by the defense before it was ever handed to this detective, first off. Secondly, yeah, there's a typo. The state agrees that this is not Investigator Marcy. That's, that's wrong. I don't know why none of the lawyers ever caught this. Hold on, Ms. Duncan. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could please have you take a step outside. All right, we're adjourned. Is no Hilly going to be testifying? Yes, he's the next witness. That's why I didn't know if there was a problem. Well, I didn't know he was the next witness. If that's the case, I can do it with him. I didn't know it was not him till just now. My apologies, Your Honor. Ms. Dunnikowski informed me that Hilly would be the next witness. I, 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 over the lunch break, I forgot to notify Mr. Ho. My apologies. Okay, you don't have to tell me who their witnesses are. I'm cool with that. Thank you for falling on your sword, Mr. Goff. Uh, unnecessary at this point. You live to talk another day. Okay. Well, it, it, if that's the case, I'll just wait and do it with him. Then just that one little section is all I was going to do. Unless knowing that I would do that, would it be a problem just to do it with him? If so, I'll do it with no Hilly. Please do it with no Hilly. Then. Okay, I'll do it with no Hilly. And I've just got uh, one more area with Investigator Marcy, and I'll be done with him. Figured it could be solved. Let's go ahead and get the panel. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, appreciate your patience when we have these uh, short breaks, uh, but we've resolved what we need to resolve, and I believe we're ready to continue. All right, Investigator Marcy, uh, thank you for that correction. That's not sir. you, that's No Hilly, who's talking at this point on page 65, correct? Yes, sir. 
Uh oh, I thought, I thought we were missing one. Oh, I'm sorry, that seat's blocked. Yes. Thank you. back on. Okay, uh, Investigator Marcy, we were just establishing that it was no hilly and not you, uh, page 65, where I was just about to ask you about a portion of the testament or the uh, uh, statement by Mr. McMichael, right? Yes, sir. And you and I just learned that no hilly is the next witness, so you and I are going to skip this and go to a different area, so I want to go to page 35. This is the last topic I'm going to cover with you. Yes, sir. Now, <clears throat> page 35, starting at line 21. Now, this is a part of what you testified to on direct. Um, the statement that Mr. McMichael said to you that the state brought out that he was in the back of the truck with his 357, right? Yes, sir. And um, I want you to read, because they, they went down to line 25 where he says, I said stop, you know, I'll blow your fucking head off or something. I was trying to convey to this guy, we're not playing, you know. You remember talking about that earlier? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I want you to go back and read silently to yourself lines 21 down to 25, and let me know when you're done. Yes, sir. And then I want to go over to page 36, line 3, and I'm going to go ahead and add out loud two more lines. Mr. McMichael's saying to you, well, the guy, I'm trying to. This is not part of the rule of completeness. This does not go with the section just read. Yeah, it, it does, Your Honor. I can show it to you. Yeah, let's see what you got. You want to see it? Yep. It's just the part I have highlighted in general. Can you give me 35? Yeah, it's just that part that I highlighted. Yeah. Right, but the previous, just so I understand where we are. Sorry, this is 35 and 36. I'm objecting to what's on 36. Okay, now he asked Correct. for 34. <laughs> oh, okay. Gigs, yeah. So it was just what well, was just read and came off of 34. You see the dark yellow? Yep. That's what the state read. And then the lighter yellow on those two lines. I'd say, I, I thought you were dovetailing in from prior. I understand what you're saying. It's two lines, as I understand. Okay, I understand. Thank you, Judge. Okay, so we're at 36, 
uh, this is right after this statement we just heard I was about I was trying to convey to this guy we're not playing you know and then he says to you well the guy I'm trying to think what happened next it was a blur see that yes sir now what I want you to do so we can talk about the context of this statement about blowing his head off is read from line four to line 15 silently and let me know when you're done. On there. You good? Yep. I mean, you're a fast reader. Okay, good. Um, now, given everything you've just read, some to yourself and some out loud, beginning on page 35, line 20, all the way down to 36, line 16. And adding to that what we see up on this board that you said earlier where the red bubble with the white X in it yes, sir. is the spot on Holmes Road where the truck was stopped and the encounter with Mr. Arbery occurred when the shooting happened. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And you said that's the only place on Holmes Road that you were aware from your interview with Greg McMichael that they'd had any contact with Mr. Arbery. Yes, right? sir. So now, in light of that and what you've just read here, this comment about stop blowing his head off would have occurred right there. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you're aware from the case that also right there at that same place, at that same time, Mr. McMichael is standing in the back of his pickup truck, his son's pickup truck, with a cell phone to his ear talking to 911 in those final seconds before the fatal encounter with Mr. Arbery. Yes, sir. You're aware of all that? Yes, sir. And you would agree, would you not, that if a person is remembering or trying to remember the exact words he said, that the best source to know what he said would be a recording of it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. 